<laughs> All right, so I just saw the first episode, and I still don't even quite understand what I just saw. Yeah. So for that's people who haven't seen it, but it was try to explain what. Absolutely, I good. have not yes. laughed that hard in a long time. Oh, nice. But I'm still wrapping my head around it. But I want you guys. I'm gonna give you the challenge of trying to okay. explain this to somebody who hasn't seen it. You first. Okay, I'll start. Uh, Mike Tyson has uh, decided he is ready for his next chapter, and he's decided that he's going to solve mysteries. And with the help of his adoptive daughter, Young He, and a, and Mike in real life does have pigeons, so this is a pigeon who uh, we'll find out later, but it's basically cursed into this world. It's a man. And then there's the, uh, oh, he calls him Marcus, or the uh, Marquis of Queensbury, who was actually a guy who officially cemented the rules of boxing. Yeah, boxing and so he has yeah. come into Mike's life to help him uh, with this supposed next career choice. And something else that people don't know, you know, the Marcus of Queensbury had a son who was the lover of Oscar Wilde, a great poet writer in like the 18th, 19th century. And of course he was, um, he implemented and helping Oliver Oscar Wilde go to prison. And sometime during this whole little um, episode, we have to get an episode where he he deals with that. Deals with that, and he has to apologize to Oscar, and uh, make sure that he um, same-sex marriages are cool now, and you know it's no longer a bad thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. And um, so if you show that to somebody, they go, "Got it." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally understand the com <laughs> absolutely the show is it, crystal clear. <laughs> Don't know why anybody wouldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, that's how we like it. Because <laughs> you got to watch it and you got to figure it out, so you got to keep watching until you it's figure wonderfully, it out. It's wonderfully weird and then in, encased in something that we're very familiar with, which is those sort of lost 80s cartoons, yeah. mm -hmm. which were all is about it, mysteries. Yes. Addicted to chaos. Yes. <laughs> what were your favorite cartoons from that time? Um, this well, stuff. we started mentioning a few. The Space Ghost, Hannah Space Barbera. Ghost. Scooby Doo was one of the greatest ones. You know, you can't always Tom and Jerry. You can't mm -hmm. stop Tom and Jerry. No, you're <laughs> absolutely right. All the uh, okay. yes, Bo Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Hour I watched. Mm. Uh, beep beep. Yeah, and but I also like the obscure ones, which was Mighty Man and Yuck Yuck, which no one gonna remember. No. It was probably lasted maybe uh, half a season, but it was a dog that was so hideous that he wore his uh, doghouse on his head, and when he took it off, it frightened people. Um, You're making so, this up. No, no, no. Mighty Man and Yuck Yuck, you can look it up. Wow. You no, know, um, the coyote and the roadrunner, you know, it come, the roadrunner comes across as just such a docile animal. Um, roadrunner, roadrunner, they're carnivorous. You know, they eat other well, birds. Yeah, they oh. do, the little nasty dog. And they always made us look at him eat yeah. bird seed. Come exactly. on, let's mm. get some reality in here and see him eat some meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what has been a scene that you guys can think of where I, I can imagine they're all quite the funny? I go to the moon. You go. <laughs> I'm a serial killer for astronauts. Astronaut serial killer, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, it's easy to explain. Okay. Got it. Is there a, been a scene where you guys were cracking up when you were trying to record it? Because I'm cracking up just hearing about this stuff. Because Can't imagine I, I, um, recording this. Yes, it is. Because, you know, he plays the Marquise of Queensbury, which he controls the English language like a servant. And I I pretty much um, butcher the English language in the <laughs> episodes. And so you but can see the... It is fun to watch everybody work because everyone's in process. You know, uh, Norm is very funny as both the pigeon and in recording because he adds stories in between each actual recording mm -hmm. from his life, which Norm is Norm's an inebriated pigeon. Mm -hmm. He drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. As you've seen, I told you he does <laughs> Yeah. And then finally, how did each of you guys get involved with this project? Well, people how did came, this happen? People approached us, and we disagreed on the project, and some way we mm -hmm. came around to do it. And it turned out to be awesome. Yeah. We negotiated together. We were in the same room, and I said, if Mike does it, I'll do it. I and you it. said, if Jim does it, I'm in. And, I'm and then on, we said, on the count of three, and one, two, three, and I said, out. And he said, in. And then we fought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then we decided, yes. But uh, the real answer would be, well, they approached you and talked yeah. about it, and, and uh, it I seemed like no. a... I said, no, I be crazy. And he said, no, crazy. <laughs> And then I said yes instantly because I'll do anything. But also, uh, <laughs> the people behind it, I, I went to the Groundlings with Hugh Davidson as one producers and our young. He also, uh, Rachel Ramress, uh, who also writes with Hugh, uh, we were in the Groundlings together and I'd do just about anything and I'd worked with them on some Looney Tunes stuff. So 
uh, and my voice is one of those things that just drips into animation. Is that an expression? No, you <laughs> Yeah, like it makes a pile and then somehow they do something with it. Your voice is really good for this. Well, thank you. I was looking for a compliment and yeah, I just got really the one good. I wanted. Really good. 